Hey everybody, down in the basement tonight, going to be working on the uh, head unit of the SIP drill press. And I've uh, got a few issues. I'm, I'm going to be taking this all apart just because uh, at the very minimum I need to uh, take it apart to clean it and for priming and painting. But it's got some issues going on with it. Um, the way this works is um, you've got these two shifters or uh, what do they call them, belt carriers? Shippers. I think in the old days they called these belt shippers. Anyways, what's supposed to happen is, uh, this one's actually out of position a little bit, what's supposed to happen is the belt's sitting in here running on this pulley, for instance, and uh, you've got another one on this side over here. Of course, I've got the pulley out. These shippers run on these almost like barber pole uh, screw type uh, posts and they go down into underside right here and somehow there's a mechanism there's a long rod that goes through here so that what's supposed to happen is when you turn this lever right here on the outside you're supposed to be able to flip this lever that's supposed to cause these posts to turn simultaneously and cause both of these shippers to simultaneously move down and what that'll do is that'll have the effect of kicking the belt down to the next step pulley and of course since this step pulley has the large diameter on this side and the one that would be here would be in opposite so the large diameter is on the bottom you get a, uh, a change in the ratio the other thing that's uh, kind of neat about this thing is the fact that you've got a probably a torsion spring inside here that actually keeps this arm pushing that this roller up against the belt this way so it's an automatic tensioning system so it's going to automatically keep tension on that belt at, even as it shifts to the different uh, locations so that's kind of neat but there's a problem when I turn this I can kind of hear something moving in there and I can see this barber pole is moving but if you notice this one it doesn't seem to want to be turning at all and the bottom of it's just kind of moving back and forth a little bit. So something is rotten in Denmark as far as that goes. So we got to figure out what's going on in there. And it looks like we've got this big plate on the bottom here. We'll have to see if that comes off. If not, then maybe it's, uh, I can see on the top. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. There's the camera frame. On the top here, we definitely do have these plates that have screws in them that look like they would allow these parts to maybe be taken out through the top. There's also a screw here that almost looks like an adjustment screw with a locking nut around it. So I'm assuming there's a certain adjustment that's supposed to be made there when everything's put together and working properly. But uh, for starters, I'm going to take a look at the bottom of this thing. Well, he had previous owner had this wire wrapped on here and it was kind of acting to tie to keep tension on something looks like it was keeping tension on this on this roller right here which is supposed to have the torsion spring doing that job so maybe there wasn't enough either there wasn't enough tension in there or maybe he just thought more tension was the issue I think what it was was I think he's he's got this belt that this homemade belt lacing job that he did here didn't come out right and I think the belt was a little too loose and so I think he was trying to make up for an improperly sized belt by forcing more tension on there to uh, take care of the fact that he was having some slippage of the belt so get out of there let's see. So that one definitely looks like it's trying to move. This seems to be the one that's locked up for some reason. So I can see that there are screws here to take this cap off. So why don't I see if I can get these screws out. See, we'll use just a, this scribe here to scrape out the, uh, the old paint and expose the uh, slots, clean them out pretty well. 
this one I already got started. They're in their tight, but they are coming off, so that's good. At least this first one is. Let's see if I'm that lucky with the other two. Interesting. Looks like it was just three screws coming off. Something's holding it. Well, it almost looks to me like this this part right here that this rod is going through is part of this part right here. So I think the reason why I can't take this uh, off is because this rod looks like it needs to come out first. What's interesting about that is right on this end of the rod right here, it almost looks to me like there's a little collar that would stop that from being able to come out that way. So that's not exactly a wealth of information there. Hmm. Well, let me try to take this back one off. Oh, looks like the same problem. It looks like there was another part on the bottom of this that, that rod's going through. I think that rod has to come out. Now, I don't even see how the end of the rod would come out this way. There's no opening. Nope. Rod's going to go out this way. Take the handle off, that's not going to do anything for me. Oh, wait a minute. Alright, looks to me like there's two screws here behind the handle that hold this whole assembly right here onto the front. And that might also be what actually acts to keep that rod in. So. I'm going to start by trying to take this nut off and get that handle off. Oh, that's on that tight. You know what? i got to get something to put the hardware in before I lose some screws. I'm just putting them on the floor right now and I'm going to kick them and send them flying. Let's see if this little pulley fits on here. It's like every time I got a job like this, I think I need a really small puller for. I grab this small puller that they have, and it always seems to end up being too small for the job. Let's see if that's going to be the case again. Well, actually, it's not too bad size wise, except for the fact that the jaws can't get behind. That gap's not long enough. Let's see if I've got another set. Nope. The other pullers I have are all larger and their jaws are even bigger, so they have even more problem fitting behind here. Let me see. What if I put a screwdriver on each side and try and simultaneously Papers. Okie doke. I have this upside down right now. In other words, this is the part that sits on top of the column here. So, I want to just note, in case there's a way to put this on backwards, that the quarter inch and three eighths inch drill bit sizes face down. Although all the numbers are on, all the fractions on here are, are put on in such a way so that they all 
are right side up when you're reading them. So that's the other dead giveaway, I guess. So I guess I didn't really have to worry about that after all. I really don't want to cam out on these. Uh, let's see. Just to grab onto the square shank of the screwdriver. I broke that one loose. Let's try this one. Hey, having pretty good luck tonight so far. Now, I wonder if these two screws. Are different size than the six that came out of these two bottom plates. Yes, they're longer. Yep, that was the key. That rod is coming out. Well, it was coming out. Oh, well, look at that. There's a woodruff key. Oops. <laughs> There's a uh, woodruff key right there. So that just pulled out of a something over here. So I should probably take that woodruff key out before it falls out and gets lost. So I'm assuming there's going to be another one in there. And this rod is just stuck from being in there. It's so long. Ah. Well, that came off, so now I'm not going to have that to help me pull. <laughs> this one looks like it's completely engaged from the back here now. So let's see. In other words, this one looks like it's pulled out completely, so I bet you this will come off now. Yeah. So that's the deal there. Oh. Ooh, there's a lot going on in there. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Look at that gear. Hmm. I'm a little scared. I think I think I'm gonna find damaged gears when I take that other one off. And not the kind of gears that I'm gonna be able to find easily or make easily. Alright, no sense in panicking just yet. Oh, I see uh, acorn pieces, everything that the little Mises would go in there and drop off. And of course that rod, the barber pole, that's got a gear on the bottom of it. Or teeth on the bottom of it. So now, I can see the woodruff key fell out. And it's sitting right there. Grab that. Okay. Now we gotta get this rod the rest of the way out. Oh man, that's dirty. That also would be part of the reason why it would have a hard time turning. Oh man. And what's happening is now the dirty part of the rod that was exposed in here is trying to go through this tight fit right here. I guess maybe I should have cleaned that off some before trying to get it to go this way. Now it doesn't want to go back in. And I don't want to, I don't want to risk of damaging it. Like trying to damage the threads. It's very fine threads here where the handle goes on. So let me uh, hook something up to tap that sucker. Something's still holding this one. Hmm. 